Hello people of the earth and welcome back to Quick Save TV. My name is Mike and today we're talking about base building or more specifically about selecting and um, actually thinking about your base, what you need from your base and how you can accomplish it. So um, first and foremost, to frame our thinking about the topic, we need to think of the following, right? I'll just open my base screen and we'll think about it. We have to answer three questions three big questions and these questions are what resources and knowledge do you have so what kind of resources do i have how much influence do i have how many resources i have at my disposal in form of knowledge what kind of knowledge do i have auto mechanics mechanics electronics computers etc what are these things and how can they help us right then what do you want to accomplish so in other words, what type of strategy would you like to pursue? What type of priorities do you have on your base build? Uh, do you want to have a place where you can craft ammo? Do you want to have a place which produces food and minimizes your food consumption? Things like that. And the third thing you have to ask is what resources do you need to accomplish this strategy that you have in mind? So in my case, let's take a look at my base briefly. There are a couple of things that I can think about. So I have an auto shop and I can craft vehicle upgrade kits and I can improve the statistics for my vehicles, right? So I can improve the endurance or stealth for one hour by using a mm, significant number of parts, but it's for one hour, so it's doable. And I can craft upgrade kits. Now, what's the problem with that? I already have the knowledge of auto mechanics, which is really nice, but I don't have the power. So I could think of getting power. That's the problem to fix my auto shop. Now, in terms of my barracks, I only produce, provide four beds and i have four sh two sheltered beds here in total i have six beds for eight people very bad not enough how can i fix that well the thing in mind that comes to mind immediately i could replace my b my trader leader to a warlord leader and upgrade my barracks into the spartan barracks which would be really nice that would solve my issue completely and allow me to remove my sheltered beds now what about my workshop well to improve my workshop i don't need anything else i can just improve it right now and infirmary again i can improve right now very good so these things are working my watchtower is already level two my storage is already at level 2. I'm not interested right now in pursuing these things. Now, what about my restaurant? It's not operating efficiently. Why? Well, I can't really use it. I don't have the skill of cooking. Let's take a look at how we can fix it right here, right now. So, well, I have a bunch of people here. And one of these people here, well, he's not the best in terms of stats, but he has an empty slot for learning. He could become better. He could become a nice member of our community, at least for the time being. How can we do that? Well, let's see if I have the proper book. I honestly don't know. I'm not, it's not scripted or anything. Do we... We do not have a proper book. Very good. Very bad, actually. So we need a book of cooking. If we can find the book for cooking, we will start utilizing our facility here. This inbuilt facilities cannot be removed. So I have to work around them to utilize them. The wheelhouse truck stop on this particular map, the Drucker County, uh, has a... Uh, two inbuilt facilities right F three inbuilt facilities it has an auto shop which i cannot remove it has a restaurant kitchen and it has a huge fuel storage from these three facilities only one i cannot use so this one is useless to me entirely useless having increased fuel storage by 100 is legit 100 percent useless because I have a special trick for you today and I will explain it. So now that we have answered all these questions and we analyzed my base uh, in a little bit more detail, let's try to summarize some general ideas that you can think about when you work with your base and when you're thinking of upgrading to a bigger base or a better base. How do we think about it? Well, one of the, the first thing is the electricity, right? Uh, electricity is... You're capable of obtaining electricity by building a generator, and there are three types of generators in the game. The generators are uh, the normal generator, the solar array generator, and I think there was another one. Very nice. No, it's not here. Yeah, it's the modification of the original generator that becomes a quiet generator that doesn't produce the threat, but gives you all the benefits of energy. Now, building a generator allows you to supply all your base with power. Additionally, you can try to conquer a power supply station in order to get yourself uh, the running energy within your base. What are the benefits of getting the energy? Well, there are a couple things. Mm, one uh, first thing is that everyone will be a little more happy and that's actually a useless thing right that you shouldn't do it because of that here you go water ah it's water storage 
Well, whatever, you get me. I'm not sure what the generator here is yet. I haven't searched. So yeah, everyone will be a little happier. That's not very interesting. That's actually really useful, useless. Um, because the benefit to morale is very low. Your base will look prettier. Now, that's a significant benefit. But real, uh, real talk, the benefit of having the energy is to have... Facilities like workshop and facilities like headquarters work in better. And what is this work in better? Your HQ will be able to provide you special bonuses to your... Um, will provide you special bonuses connected with satellites. So you'll be able to scout around you, uh, see all the Zeds and hostile um, survivors around you. and Or you would be able to make a nice direct hit at them, which are both very nice. Now, when we talk about the workshop, workshop will provide you material materials every day, but also it will allow you to build more complex recipes. To craft pipe bombs, to craft fuel bombs, and to craft other cool shit, you require energy. These things are significantly better than their counterparts, and it's really worth it to have the energy. But the problem with workshop, if you place a energy generating facility, you cannot use something like... Uh, something like... Um, filling machine or something like the um, uh, improved bolt crafting because y it takes the slot it eats the slot right but if you have a generator again it's a slot at your base and it has the same negative sides of having this so an outpost for energy generation is actually a really good idea one of the other good ideas is water, right? That's the second thing, water. Water can be really useful. And the two main factors in which it's useful, useful there are more, but uh, the two main factors are the infirmary, and uh, um, it's also useful with your... I forgot, man. What's the... Ah, the farm, right? Because I don't have it. The farm takes energy. Uh, even if you build the hydro, hydroponics, the best farm in the game, you still need energy... You still need, excuse me, water for it. But in case of hydroponics you also need um, uh, power and uh, this makes this type of farm very difficult to obtain di very difficult to build and maintain but it's the best farm in the game and the reason you need water for a farm again you have some ways around it you could build something like let me just see this yeah you could install a water cooler and fill it with water that's totally decent and it's enough for your infirmary for example in order to craft the painkillers. That's the main reason why you would have it. But then you won't be able to install advanced biochem station, which is a really good addition to your base. It allows you to craft all kinds of cool shit. More specifically, it allows you to craft things such as Zedrenaline or Sandblock or Zedi. All of them are really, really cool, especially Zedrenaline and Sandblock. Zedrenaline makes you a bona fide killing machine, and Sandblock makes it so that zombies are unable to see you or hear you from any distance, any range. And you are essentially, you are, you can move unmolested and fight hostile survivors, scavenge things, level up your wits, whatever the hell you want. And it's really, really useful. Now, so when we talk about water, it's another useful resource. And it's also very important in terms of farming. Because food is one of the most important resources in this game, surprisingly. Your survivors use all kinds of resources, true. But they need food every day. And there's no way to... There, there are ways to mitigate it. Very good ways. One of these ways is here. Check it out. Let me find it. No, no. Yeah, the meal plan. Check it out. The hero bonus. Meal plan. Minus 25% food consumed. And oh, there's another way, but it, it reduces morale. You can enact rationing. And if we enact both of these things, the morale will drop, but people will consume almost a negligible amount of food. Allow me to demonstrate you. So we will enact it right now, and until the end of the video, we'll be ready. Yeah, well, I mean, hopefully. Uh, so again, water can be very useful, very important. The third thing, outpost. Well, how do we work around outpost? There's one important thing you can build to increase the number of the outposts. It's a module for your command center and this module is the antenna or the um, uh, network antenna first gives you plus one outpost the other plus two outpost and there's been a post on twitter saying that you can install this module module in a lot of places now outposts we use for many things right we use them to create spots on the map which we can visit to supply right this allows me to work in this region and not go home for longer period of time same here right i almost looted everything around here also this one it's all looted i haven't scouted this but point is these outposts allow you a better coverage of the map and better mobility but at the same time they provide you with resources but not only resources they can allow you to do different things the three things the outposts allow you to do are offset your spending, 
focus on um, one specific type of resource, and third is to obtain new special bonuses. So when we talk about special bonuses, we're talking things like this. The evacuation center gives me the ability to throw artillery strikes. Are they worth it? I mean, sometimes, yes, they can deal catastrophic damage to stationary targets or to hordes of zombies. They can essentially dismantle an entire group of zombies for 150 influence. That's kind of a bargain, to be honest. Even though you go in debt for doing it, it's kind of a bargain. Then, when we talk about production outposts, I'm using the food outposts in order to offset my food spending. So I have some food spending, some meds spending, some material spending, but my ammo and fuel stay the same. So I'm just trying to offset my spending. I'm not actually making anything, right? Okay. Oh, or another strategy could be, let's say I want bullets, and I don't care how I get them. And the good way to be uh, to do uh, this would be then to search every outpost that can provide me with bullets, and then put an outpost there, and just try to scavenge as many bullets as we can. It's also a diff difficult thing to do, because not all the buildings on the map that you encounter allow you to obtain uh, useful things. Some of them are just that, just building you can claim in order to have a thing there. So these are very bad outposts. For example, this outpost here is bad. <laughs> this is good. This is good. It provides you beds. This is good. It provides you food. This is good. It provides you beds. The other one over there, I think, provides you with materials. So you have to think about it strategically. What kind of thing you're trying to accomplish? What do you want to get? There you go. Police department. We can get infinite supply of bullets forever. I mean, for as long as we control it. So that's what how we think about outposts. Now, towers. Well, there's one thing that you cannot live without. It's a watchtower. It's a watchtower at your base. And the reason you cannot live without it is... Uh, um, well, I learned it the hard way. I didn't lose anyone, but man, it was freaking hard. It was devilishly hard. And um, the reason why it's hard without a watchtower or a variation of watchtower, you can use the uh, DLC, the hard, uh, the Daybreak DLC, Heartbreak, I wanted to say, the Daybreak DLC or the um, uh, Builder Tower. And the reason you want to have a tower is because a well-placed tower, like in the middle of your compound right here, it covers this entrance completely. It covers all of my cars. It has exceptional visibility and it covers all the areas here. So if you turn around, they cover all of these areas, at least a little bit. They don't cover the back entrance here from the main road, but it doesn't matter. They cover a lot of spaces. And the reason you want to have outposts, again, this watchtower, because of the juggernauts. That's the only reason, and it's the biggest reason. And uh, destroying juggernauts without a watchtower can be a big pain in the ass. It's not impossible, and your survivors equipped with good guns can do it, but without watchtower, it's a big pain in the ass. With a watchtower, it's almost too easy. Now, that's watchtowers. Now, morale. It's a very interesting thing, morale in this game. Look, me enacting the, enacting the rationing reduced the morale, but it will allow me for this day to have the positive income of food. Uh, why is morale important? That's an interesting one. So, when you have positive morale, every action in your base is sped up, you receive more experience and you receive additional standing. So your characters become heroes faster, which is useful because you get their bonuses quicker into the game. Having their bonuses active is very, very important because their bonuses are usually very powerful and very useful. Uh, now, second thing, they get experience faster. Your characters will become full. So there's a big difference between this character, Eddie, who just joined, and this character. Uh, Vic is a killing machine compared to Eddie. He is worth, I would say, four times more because he's capable to make very, very difficult, arduous runs for a very long time without getting too exhausted. And it makes me really, really useful as a backup partner and it makes him really useful as a primary character. So, leveling up faster helps a lot. Another thing it helps you to do is it speeds up actions at your base, which is really nice because now the game is real-time and you cannot cheat uh, your way out of it. Well, unless you use the cheat engine. Um, right. W with low morale, you have the opposites of these things, and you have people threatening to leave your encampment, to leave your community. Very bad. And another thing that ends up happening is when you have low morale, about four times a day, people will spend or waste additional resources. They will waste food, they will waste medicine, they will waste ammunition, uh, building supplies, building materials, and fuel. They will do it for the stupidest of reasons, but this is because they are uh, under severe amount of stress and they cannot handle it properly. And the reason they cannot handle it is because you're not providing them an opportunity to relax. There are a lot of buildings that reduce stress. For example, 
latrine reduces stress, lounge reduces stress, a quality sheltered uh, bed area uh, reduces stress. Um, a lot of these things, and of course, water and energy, as I said before. And focusing on your morale is a valuable strategy. And you also have to watch out about the people that reduce the morale at base. Like, for example, uh, her, irritable towards other people. She can be a problem. Or he, I think. Yeah, he's irritable towards other people and he annoys irritable people. So these people annoy irritable people. So these people are, unless carefully managed, can create morale catastrophes. And eventually people will leave if you don't put a lid on the situation. And putting the lid on the situation usually means destroying infestations, getting influence for the character, uh, helping our allies, things like this. So again, morale can be very important and you have to take it into consideration when you're building your base. Storage. Okay. When we talk about storage, there's a really cool trick I want to show you. So obviously there's some limitation on things you want to store at your base. For me, it's the medicine, the ammo, materials, fuel, and food. All limited at 27 because I have, I think, somewhere I have a module here. The for Yeah, yeah. Plus two storage for food and meds. Uh, and I also have um, the plus five storage for materials. No. Very good. But that's not enough. That's not a lot at all. How can you circumvent it? Well, check it out. You can put a bunch of cars in front of your uh, base, such as, uh, you know, whatever car that has six slots at least, and you can do this. And this way you can preserve these rucksacks with materials and resources for a very long time before you actually need it. And when you do need them, let's take a look. What the hell do I need? Oh yeah, I need that. Bam. Deposit it back to our base. Cool. They can last there forever, and this way you're not going to have any spoiled materials. That's also a really good way to migrate to another base. If you know you won't be able to spend all the materials, it's a very good way to prevent them from spoiling. Okay, very good. I've covered that. Now, the seventh... Uh is it the seventh tip? Yeah, make use of the skills and inbuilt facilities. This I covered at the start when I analyzed my base. When you have a base that provides you with auto shop, make sure you have a mechanic with you. Otherwise, this auto shop is a waste of space. If you have a base that provides you with water supply, make sure your leader is a trader or you have an experienced farmer so you can convert this water into a positive advantage. Because if you have a spot, like from my facilities here, I don't use one because there's literally no good way to use it and because if i move to another uh, facility if i move to another base this extra fuel storage will be gone and the fuel will be wasted but uh, kitchen and auto shop are at the top of my priorities right now i'm searching for a cooking manual to make a cook uh, to create an experienced cook uh, and once i do that i will be able to utilize the kitchen and make feasts which will increase my stamina and morale which are both really really good things and in terms of auto shop i'm searching for a generator and i'm thinking about conquering a power plant so both of these things will help me so when you think about your base building you have to firmly understand okay well, well what kind of uh, what kind of knowledge what kind of uh, materials what kind of outposts i will need in order to make this place worthwhile. What kind of skills I will need, knowledge skills, to make this place worthwhile. Because if you don't have it, because perhaps it's a waste of time. And that's really how you should think about base building. Because sometimes I hear people talking, what is the best base? What is the best place uh, to settle? And honestly, it really depends on your strategy. It really depends on your strategy. There are, the biggest places in on the map are usually the best places to settle, of course. But when it comes to their price, they're really impractical. And it's um, a little pointless to rush after them right from the start because it puts a huge strain on your resources and delays other important goals, like setting establishing the control over this area there were a couple of infestations i destroyed all of them and there was one heart i've also destroyed it so this is the priority going there was not a priority you have to think one step at a time and keep the late game and goal right in mind well what do i want to do in the end i want to destroy all the hearts what will i need for it ammunition uh, ammunition explosive explosives and um, firebombs well how can i accomplish this and go like this step by step step by step this is how you will reach success so again Thank you so much for watching and listening. I hope you've enjoyed. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed today's video. Um, come back tomorrow for a new video. Subscribe to see more and put a like on this video if you've enjoyed it. Don't be shy to share the video with your friends. It helps me tremendously and it gets the word out about nice state of decay content. Uh, new video tomorrow. As I said, have a fantastic day and I'll see you soon.